Good morning everybody from a very beautiful and sunny mid Wales. Look at that today, really making the most of it being gorgeous. So I'm here to show you an example of the kinds of activities that we are going to be doing together for you to do with your children, whether you're a parent or a practitioner. Perfect for three to seven year olds, but will be ideal for younger and older children as well. And really good for all of you pitching in and doing something super simple together. So I'm going to show you, it takes no resources that you need to pay for. It takes no prior knowledge. You just need to do what I'm doing and you will see maths magic happening. So my inspiration for this activity was actually my breakfast this morning. I do love a rhubarb yogurt and I was thinking, right, okay, lots of people eat yogurts. How could I use a recycled resource like this along with what I know are really highly effective maths activities? So then I went and did some noticing and some exploring around where I live and I've got some leaves here. Notice, you'll hear me say this a lot, low cognitive load, meaning similar size, similar shape, similar colour because then the brain can focus on pattern rather than being too interested in the actual objects we're using. Best way to reduce that cognitive load as well with lovely things like this is make sure your children have lots of experience in using them and then they are still beautiful and interesting but they have reduced that cognitive load by having explored them before. I've got some fir cones here. It's not about how many, that was literally limited by how many I could fit in my yogurt pot. I've got some slices of wood, which anybody with a saw could make for you. And I've got some pebbles here, which I'll show you a little bit later, me collecting those, because for those of you who aren't in a place with autumn um, or don't have autumn at all, because you're on the, the equator, then you know we do have builder's yards where you can get things like this. So I've got that, I've got my yogurt pot, I've also got a whiteboard pen and a whiteboard and some counters, and I've got some dice. So this is pretty much the only thing that you would need to find. And I think pretty much any charity shop or if you put an appeal out on Facebook, Marketplace or similar, you will find you can get these things for free. So let's see what we're going to do. Okay, so you're going to have to put up with some um, wobbly filming here because I'm holding the, <laughs> the phone in my hand while I'm doing this. Now, the most important thing to tell you is I, I made this up on the spot, this activity, when I saw the yogurt pot, as I said. And the reason I can make things up and they work really well is because my math subject knowledge is really strong and I understand how children learn maths. It's not about the activities. So when you have really good, strong math subject knowledge, you can do the same. So what I've done here, as I say, is, I mean, masses of things to notice. These weren't convenient in a group. I had to look on the ground and decide what was a fur cone and what was wasn't what were the size leaves Oop, move out the way yogurt pot what were the size leaves I needed which was the type of tree and which weren't with the pebbles you'll see a little extra video there were so many decisions I had to make about the size shape and color and um, I had these ones already but again you could be even more strict that one's slightly bigger there's so much talk here so don't overlook all of that but the activity that I've decided to do is using a combination of a die with digits on it one to six and a die with dots on it now important message it is not subitizing when you can recognize die, dots on a die it's part of it you could link it to that but you and i have been taught that that is two and that is three and that is five and we haven't been encouraged to look within that pattern when you look within that and see the four and the one or there's a three and a two in there then that's using subitizing so just a little bit of an aside there so the game is i'm going to throw i'm going to see how many skills are coming out here i'm going to throw this die okay and then one child's going to read out that amount now another child is going to look away actually maybe we should say look away before they roll that so one child looks away the other child rolls this, could be three children or two children, and that tells how many things have got to be arranged. So I'm going to use a yogurt pot, so it kind of limits what I can fit under there. Let's do the stones. Now, if a child is counting, they're only counting because they think that's what's right. The more we do work with pattern, the more they are going to be able to put four down in whatever arrangement. Typically, gosh, that yogurt pot is uh, being a bit of a minx. Um, they're going to be able to put it down in a pattern <coughs> and 
And this, of course, is one of the most common, most easily seen patterns of four. And they'll be able to do that without counting. OK, if they do want to count, get them to sing a little song while they're arranging them, because that little song will stop them counting. OK, but of course, they've got to know what that pattern of four looks like. So that is this game is for that stage in development. So what we're going to then do is I'm going to cover over, which might actually move them around a little bit. And the other child is going to then turn around and I am going to show them what I've got very quickly. Now, if you think that's too small, because I was thinking about acorns first, I have got a bigger, no expense spared, spared plant pot here. So if I take that one off, just get rid of all the other bits that nature is adding in. There we go, we can space it out a little bit more now. So I'm going to hide that. So the other towel turns round and we show them it briefly and then do this. And this child over here has to recreate what they think they saw. So here, not only is that child having to hold that image in their head, it's not about getting it right, by the way, it's about trying to do it, but they're also recreating it with a different resource. So there's that idea that this isn't about stones and it's not about counters, it is about the pattern. So we can go back over here. Remember, the emphasis is on not about getting it right, it's about playing the game. So there, do they think? How do they think? they saw it so particularly here we've got the fairly square pattern if they know what a square is they might talk about that they might talk about there's a two and a two in it you could guide that when you look at it together and say have a look what did we notice well I noticed there was a two and a two I noticed there was a two and a two and even when your children don't know the labels for this even when they're still learning it you modeling this and you talking is what's going to help them do it now finally either you modeling or them doing it in time I am going to look up on a number track or a number line I'm going to find out how to write the number four and I could write it with a whiteboard pen I could write it in water on the ground I could use chalk use lots of different mark making tools because they strengthen different parts of the body so that game was roll the die out of sight of another child so they're recognizing a digit create that amount in a pattern, you could do it randomly if you like and use conceptual subitizing, but when you can see it all in one, that's perceptual subitizing, it's much easier. Cover it with your container, no expense spared. Those are completely free if you ask on Marketplace, if you're not a gardener. Recreate it when you've had a little glance. Keep checking, don't put an emphasis on getting it right, put an emphasis on doing it together and then writing the digit as well. So a variation on that would be to throw this dot die and you could use that instead. But the idea is you're connecting the word, the symbol, the pattern, the writing of it, mark making, and lots and lots of playfulness with the mathematics. So what did you think? Key message from that video, we can get very magpied by lovely resources and an activity that excites us. That is great, but I want you to think about, that's a bit like the tip of the iceberg sticking out of the water. It's the, the bit you can see. That's not what leads you to teach maths well, okay? Googling activities, uh, you just using a scheme on its own is never ever going to teach maths well. What lies under the water is your understanding of the mathematics and your understanding of what your children are interested in and how they learn. When you've got that right, just like I showed there with my, uh, let me grab it, my little yogurt pot this morning, you will come up with ideas all the time. And what as well is that even easier than that, you will watch what your children are doing in their play in genuine continuous provision. Continuous provision is not about you providing activities. That is a massive misconception. And we see all the time people writing beautifully on a tough tray and asking children questions that they generally can't read yet. That is not continuous provision. Continuous provision is about providing a stimulating environment that your children will interact with in a meaningful way. And us watching what they're doing and then using that combined with our subject knowledge to design activities to enhance that learning and extend that learning. So that's what we're gonna be doing everybody in our autumn maths detectives. Can you see how unthreatening it will be for parents because there's no specialist equipment and it is 
joyous to do together and your parents will learn as much as the children learn. So I look forward to welcoming those of you that are joining me. See you very soon.